Hey guys, it is me again. Today is Friday. Yeah, Friday, Friday December 28th. I have moments of senility, guys. Uh, Friday, December 28th. That makes it day 363. Owner David Brad 2012. Anyway, guys, hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, got a, I'm not going to say a lot to talk about tonight, but just a couple little things here, a couple points. I'm going to try to make it quick, try to get into it as quick as I can. Um, number one, guys, I want, I want to apologize for not being here last night. Uh, I know I told you guys that we were uh, rebuilding the engine and the car at work at Kia. And uh, I think I told you the, you guys just the other day that the machine shop guy where we bought all the parts from, he forgot to put her head bolts in the box. Or they didn't send them on his order or something. I don't know really what happened, but we didn't get them. And it was one of those deals on the car. It, it And I told you guys this, I think, that it, it, it said new head bolts recommended but not required. Well... You know, I, I said I'm not going to do this job with no new head bolts, so, you know, we're just going to go get them. So, he got them in for us, and uh, Dad ran over there yesterday evening and picked them up. Well, you know, I worked out last night. So, anyway, when I got home from working out last night, in order to have the head torqued down and everything ready, or at least so I thought, to get everything ready, so when the boy came in first thing this morning, he could kind of get started and pick up and go, you know, I thought we was going to be ahead of the curve. So anyway, guys, I got I was down there all night last night. Uh, went down there, said oh, I'll be there 15 minutes, be back home. First off, our new head bolts were the right bolts, but the washers that that were on them and they're built onto the bolts. You can't take them off. Were uh, 40 thousandths of an inch bigger round, bigger in diameter than the old washers, and on two or three castings in the head that it had to go by to get in its boat hole. They wouldn't go through. So anyway, I had to bring two of them up here and put them on the lathe and, and trim the washers down. Uh, finally got all that done, got them torqued down. But I noticed the, the two on the end. Because like I said, it, they're, they're torqued to yield bolts, which means you take them to a certain foot pounds, a certain torque, and then you take them to a certain degrees. Well, when I got all the rest of them around to the 90 degrees, they were pretty tight you know I was doing it with a 3 8 torque wrench and it was getting to about 60 65 foot pounds well the ones over here on the end they just both went to like 40 38 or 40 and I said well that's not hardly the same but maybe the head's thinner on that end and I'm just getting a different feel whatever so I just I didn't kind of bother me but I didn't think more of it so anyway guys that's what I'm getting at I was down there like all night literally by the time I got all this done I, by the time I got home it was too late to make a video. So, anyway, that kind of takes me into my next thing. I want to praise the Lord for catching something, for letting the boy catch that today. You know how I was just telling you those two boats didn't feel exactly right? He went ahead and put the timing belt on it, timing gears, got it, a lot of it done. And something just, he said, told me to look down at those boats. And he said, don't get me wrong, he said, I never check your work. He said, because, you know, he said, if I expect anybody to do everything right, he said, it's you. So he said, I wasn't checking your work. I said, well, you're not insulting me with that. But anyway, he said, he just got to look at it, and he said, those bolts didn't look right to him. So he took his magnet out of his pocket and wrenched down there, and the washer rattled on it, which means the boat wasn't tight. So anyway, guys, long story short, I praise the Lord for showing him that, because what happened was, he didn't notice it when he took the, the head apart, and I didn't notice it going together. Most times when, head, when heads have like different length bolts, they'll have like five long ones and five short ones, or six long ones and six short ones, and, and you can really tell a difference in them. This head, guys, the two on the front, the head bolts were like this much, I'm trying to get it where you guys can see it, like that much shorter, and that was it. I mean, you really got to strain to look. Those two boats were supposed to be shorter, and I had the longer ones in it, and they were bottoming out before they were tightening up against the head. So anyway, we had to take it all back apart today. I torqued them all down, checked them against the old head boats, and they were still shorter. 
which means they've not stretched yet, which they won't stretch a lot until the car gets hot, cools down, does some heat cycles. But anyway, I want to praise the Lord for letting us catch that because that would have been a leaking head gasket, you know, when the car started up. So, anyway, what else? Uh, normal stuff, guys, just keep praying for us. As, of course, as I expected, no payday today. I mean, guys, we brought in $299 today, and I hate to... Well, no, I'm not going to say I hate to admit it. It shows you how God changes your perspective sometimes, what I'm trying to say. Guys, I was tickled to death to bring that $299 in today. You know, normally I would go, $300? We're going to do better than that. But the way this week's been going, I was tickled at $299. Guys, we have brought in money-wise this week, gross, in uh, 45 hours of work, what we normally bring in in... 12 or 13 hours of work. I mean, it's been that bad. Probably the worst week we've ever had since we've been in business. Probably. I, I've not... It, it's close. If it's not the worst, it's it's in the top two. But, we're still here, guys. I mean, I'll be admitted I got a little aggravated this evening because we're out of food and Mom's needing money to go to the grocery store on and I really don't have it. So... You know, I can't give it church Sunday and just all these different obligations I can't meet. But, you know what, guys? I'm not going to worry about it. Um, the Lord's going to bring it through somehow. I put my motorcycle up for sale today, my dirt bike. Dad's put his Ram Charger up for sale. I mean, that's two things that we don't have to have. Uh, you know, of course, you know, being put up for sale is not sold. So, you know, just, just pray, guys, that the Lord will send people to buy those things and uh, you know, just pray that we can keep our faith up. You know, like I told Dad today, the big thing that bothers me right now is the church is going through just as hard of financial times as I am. And it bothers me when the church goes through financial hardships and I can't help it. You know, there's been many a months before that I have paid the power bill out of my own pocket. That I have paid, me and Dad paid the mortgage one month out of our pockets. You know, we've, we try our best to, to when times are rough in the church financially, if we've got the money, we we I mean we don't hesitate to throw it in and keep it going. It bothers me when the church is going through financial hardships, and I can't help it. Which maybe that's the way that's God's way of showing that hey you know I'm the one doing this you know not you which I I know it's him him anyway but like I said guys just pray for for our finances pray for our business uh, you know I know it's going to get better you know after first of the month you know I know it's going to pick back up but. Uh, just pray for us, guys. Pray for all that. Something else I wanted, I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a shout-out tonight. Oh, Brother uh, Jeff Chance, uh, I got your uh, message you sent me, and I sent you a message back. So if you see this before you check your email or whatever, check that. I, uh, I sent you a message back. So I wanted to say that before I forgot it. Uh, I just wanted to give a little small shout-out shout out to uh, well, I mean, you guys that know him or seen him, Shop Dog Sam, a channel on YouTube. Um, I just got done watching one of his videos. He was making, he made uh, cabbage and Polish sausage, uh, put it like in a stew, you know, put beef broth in it, boiled it up, and, and then fixed uh, cornbread with it and stuff. Anyway, he does some cooking videos. He does, uh, he fools with these uh, old uh, internet I think International made them, or I, I don't know the deal. I know I've heard them call them International Harvester McCormick Deerings. So I don't know if McCormick Deering made them for International Harvester. International Harvester made them for McCormick Deering is what I'm thinking. They were bailing wire engines. We don't have farms really around here, never have had really. So I don't know much about a bailing wire machine, bailing wire engines. But anyway, he fools with them. Uh, he's got him a little, pretty good little machine chopper. He's got him a Grizzly G0602 lathe, which is the next size up for my lathe. Pretty decent size lathe. I didn't buy one. It's really too big for my shop. Too big for the space I got. But anyway, uh, he's got him a Grizzly uh, mill. Uh, he where he does those engines, you know. He, he redoes those engines, you know. Um, and he's actually from, he lives in Arkansas now. But he's actually from Harlan County, which is the county next to us. Uh, it's actually between my county 
in the county that I know most of you guys know or know of, Mad Bad Voodoo, Brother Richard. Richard, I hope you see this. Um, Richard's got a house in Kentucky. He, you know, he lives in Ohio, but he's got a house in Kentucky, too, in Bell County. And Harlan County is actually the county between Letcher County, where I live, and Bell County. Harlan County is the county in between those two. So, uh, anyway, that's where Shop Dog Sam's originally from. And he does good good videos. I mean, he's a pretty, pretty, he's a pretty good old guy. Uh, I got to laughing at him this evening when he was eating there. He said that he said something that, that's the truth. You know, he said, uh, we may be, he was talking about how good eating that was. He said, boy, we may be poor. He said, but we sure do eat good. And uh, that's what I've always said. And kind of the same deal. And that's kind of what got me aggravated today. I said, you know, I, I've been in financial hardships before, but I've, I've, I've had only maybe one other time in my life where I ever got to the point to where I was wondering how I was going to buy food for my family. And, you know, that gets scary. And that gets, that gets, and I, and I know you've got family members, you, you know, that you can borrow off of. And they you know, they always say, oh, if you get in that hard shape, you know, let us know. We'll help you. We'll, but you know how you are as a person. You're, you're, pr you're proud. You don't want to ask nobody for nothing. You know, I don't. I, I, since I was 17 years old, I've been working. I've been supporting my family. And uh, I've never really had to borrow, you know, from anybody. So I just, I, I hate doing that. But anyway, guys, Shop Dog, shop dog Sam, S-H-O-P, D-O-G, S-A-M, Shop Dog Sam. Look him up. Subscribe to him. I think I've only talked to him once, you know, messaged him on, on YouTube once. I think he mentioned something about being from Harlan County, Kentucky, and I think I messaged him about that. And uh, he don't know me from apple butter, but... Uh, he's got a good channel, so uh, go check him out. Anyway, guys, let's get to the report thing tonight. I figured since I wasn't here last night, we'd make this video a little bit longer, do a little bit more talking. So uh, 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 1, here we go. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. My Esau will catch up here, guys. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. Talking about Jesus Christ. Talking about the, the eternal life that has always been with the Father, part of the Father, and was made manifest, was made and brought to us. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I had to use this verse right here on a lot of people, guys, because that's the first thing a lot of people will try to come up and say, oh, I, I don't sin. You know, even, you know, a lot of people that claim to be saved, some that claim not, some that don't claim to be saved, but a lot of people that claim to be saved say they don't sin. You know, I can remember, and uh, Brother Woody, I remember this, me and him used to watch him on here. What was the guy's name? I can't remember his name now. Uh, Woody, you'll know it. Uh, Jan, uh, I can't remember his a uh, final call. He was kind of one of these guys that kind of preached, once you get saved, you never sin again. And, you know, I just, I don't see that. And, you know, John is saying here, you know John is a saved person. God's Spirit is indwelling him to write for the Bible. God does not do that with unsaved people. So he is saved. But what he what does he say here? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So as a saved person, he's including himself in. He's saying if we say we don't sin, we're just deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, I mean, I... You know, are we going to walk in darkness? Are we going to walk in sin? Are we going to wallow in sin and love it? No. That's what he just got talking about up, up in the beginning part of the chapter here. But are we still going to sin? 
Are we still going to stumble into sin sometimes? Are we still going to mess up? Yeah, we are. But, verse 9, good news. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. And his word is not in us. Now, I'm glad he's covering both aspects of it now. He's saying if we say we've not sinned, and that's what somebody could say now. I said, well, John, up in the verse just a second ago, he was talking about past sins. Everybody has sinned in the past. No, guys, right here he's talking about past sin. In verse 8, he's talking about present. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So anyway, guys, that's where we're going to stop tonight. That's 10 verses. We'll be, uh, good Lord willing, we'll be doing chapter 2 tomorrow night. So, anyway, guys, I love you all. Keep praying for us. Good Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow night. Until I see you all again, good night, and God bless.